Hi there. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, tonight, I just want to go over something that I get a lot of questions about, and I kind of deflect a lot, and I'm really sorry. Um, but it's not exactly one my strong suit or so arts. So this is going to be a video kind of giving you a little bit of an explanation about um, uh, what to expect when you're trying to digitize a logo or an intricate design like this in SoArt. Okay. Um, th there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you my way. If you, you're new to my channel, um, hi. <laughs> but I'm totally, just, just to get it out of the way, I'm totally unconventional and completely untrained. This is all just from stuff I've tried and figured out. Um, there are other teachers on YouTube who are more technical, and they don't say um as much or so or, you know, all the other really annoying words. <laughs> so I'm just a normal person who figured this stuff out. That's all I'm trying to get across to you. So don't expect too much from me, but I am going to try to get you through this and kind of help you understand things a little bit. All right. So we're going to go ahead and use this logo right here from Tailboard Pizza Company in North Zulch, Texas. So one of the little kids that, well, he's not a little kid anymore. He's a grown man, but <laughs> he, um, I used to babysit him whenever I was little and him and his wife started a pizza company on an old, um, fire truck. They do the wood fired pizza right there on the fire truck. And he is also a firefighter. So they do catered events and stuff like that. If you're in the area, look them up, check them out. They're amazing. They're in North Zulch, Texas, which is by College Station and Bryan. And I think the biggest city close to them is Austin. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and use their thing. If you can Go ahead and get the original image that you can get from the people, from um, whoever you're trying to do the logo for. If it's from yourself, that's awesome. But try to get the original because every time that it gets opened up in another um, email or program or something like that, it has to shift its pixels and repixelate. And that's why whenever you create something in paint that only has, you know, four or five colors and then you take it over to SoArt, you have all of a sudden 50 colors and it doesn't make sense. Well, it's because I had to basically reshuffle the deck. All right. So what we're going to do, we're not going to start in SoArt. We're going to start in paint because I need to explain a couple things. And paint is the free um, photo workshop editing thing on Microsoft computers. You should have something comparable on other computers. And um, I know that the newest paint has a lot of different features, a lot of really cool features. I'm really excited to get a new computer and play with that stuff. Um, so, you know, that we're gonna start with paint because it's free on my computer. And if you um, have a Microsoft computer, it's free for you as well. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna go up here to open, nope, that's save. File, open, and sorry, I'm all over the place too. I've done this video probably about 10 times today, and I'm not, I am hoping that I remember everything from each one. So we're gonna open up original. We're gonna open it. Let's zoom out so we can get a full look. All right, so first thing is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this lettering off. We're going to take the beer off. We're gonna take the letter off and we're going to take the little fire guy and his pizza off. We're gonna take all of that and we're going to digitize the basic shape we have here. And then we're gonna digitize these two separately. And, um, and then we're gonna merge them together and sew it pro. We're going to use pre-digitized letters that I have from Planet Applique or from the Bean Stitch, but I'm not sure if I like the, the one that they have for this. So it might be one of the two. But in any case, we're going to use a pre-digitized um, font for this part. 
And you can try to digitize this. This is just going to take a long time to get it right. It's not that we can't do it. It's just going to take forever. So pre-digitized font is great. It's a wonderful thing to just kind of throw in there. This guy right here, we're not going to digitize him in this video. I've been working on this guy for many, many, many years. And I'm hoping that the key to the success with this guy is going to be my new computer. Working with SOAR on a newer computer, I'm hoping that the graphics will be better and will be more helpful for me. But for now, this guy, he's just got to, just got to, hold off. I've never been able to digitize this logo for Ben because of this little guy right here. <laughs> Not doing very well with him. So what we're going to do here in um, in Paint is we're going to go up here to Select, Freeform Selection, and we're just going to cut all this stuff out so that we're left with our basic. But we're not going to cut it out and lose it. We're going to cut it out and put it over here kind of as a little like staging area for this stuff. I mean, we can delete these, this one and this one and this guy in the middle since we're not going to do anything with them. Um, whenever you start out with your selection, start somewhere you can pull down. And whenever you mess up, just click out, let go, and then click out. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a better thing. Okay, I'm going to start up here. Got a little too close to the letters. So let's move this over there and see if that matters that much. Nope. Okay, so we're just going to set that there for now. All right, so this is how it should look so far. This guy should be fairly easy to do. I shouldn't need to zoom in too far with him. Oops. Wonder why I assume it's a him. It's a cup of beer. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. Ooh, that was not good. See how it cut off part of it and left it there? I don't know why it did that. So let's undo that. And I know a cup of beer is not even the right, a mug of beer. <laughs> oh boy. Starting to get tired from all this. Okay. Got that guy out. You might want to zoom in on this one. Don't be cocky like me. Hey. Because that happens. <laughs> Did that little piece in there. But that's okay. We can fix that easy. Okay. And then let's come over here. Oh. Okay, so the first thing we have to do basically is to prepare our image for SoWord. And that is getting ready for it to be ready, to be ready, to be ready. Okay, so now we have all of our stuff here. We're all done. We got everything off of there. We're going to digitize these two separately. We're going to use a um, pre digitized font these and we're going to work on that guy on a whole different day <laughs> okay so down here or actually let's go ahead and oops that is not what I wanted either color picker let's grab this gray 
and take the bucket and fill in that. And then we'll take our brush. Let's zoom in. We'll probably have to pick a thicker brush. Okay, so we're basically just filling in those spots that we accidentally cut off on the other guy. So go through and do that to all of them. Oops. Grab the color. Fill it in. wonder why it did that weird thing. Okay, grab our bucket and fill it in. And just grab the brush. Fill that in. Grab a bucket. Oops. <laughs> grab the color picker. Pick some red. And then, oh yeah, brush, we'll go in here, and there's some dark red there too. Just kind of try to make it as close as possible. Brush. Oops. Just don't let it touch your black lines. You want them to stay as nice and neat and straight and even as possible. Okay. Okay, so this is the image we're gonna take into SoArt, all right? So we're gonna choose Select, Rectangular Selection, come down to this corner and grab all of it up to this corner. We're going to Copy, Open SoArt, Edit, paste. Don't worry about resizing it right now. This is all just about seeing if we can even digitize it. You can resize it later in Sew It Pro if you have it. If you don't have it, I'll show you at the end where you can resize it, okay? But we're not going to try to resize it now. What we're going to do is we're going to check our colors 254, when we really should be having like eight colors or nine colors or something like that. So let's zoom out a little so we can get a good look. First thing we're going to do with this one is posterize. It's going to do all of our blending and everything that we need to do on like a big scale. This doesn't work on every single image. So each different thing that you're going to work on in SOAR, try different ways of digitizing. Most of the reason why it took me all day to do this video and all these years to do the video is because I've always started with reducing colors and merge colors whenever this was the key today for posterizing it. It brought all of my colors down to 41 and I didn't get a bunch of, what was happening was it was kind of like looking like, um, like a lot of this gray would be down here in the red, just kind of staticky through it, and I couldn't fix that. So posterize was the key for me, okay? So now it's saying we have 41. Let's get out of here. Let's choose Merge Colors. And this is going to show us all of our colors. A lot of these colors, these little micro colors, colors that you can't even see, there's like so little, like right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to click out of that. We're gonna despec range. It's gonna merge everything under 50% with the closest color to it. Okay, so that brought it down quite a bit, but it didn't merge any of these greens, ironically. <laughs> so let's um, go ahead to merge range, choose okay. All right, so now let's look at this big one, this 13.4. We want to make sure that there's no speckles all around there. This one looks perfect. Now this gray is going to be these ones. Sometimes we get some speckles in the middle. We, again, are perfect. Thank goodness to doing the posterizing. Okay, those are all of our little middle pieces. 
our alternating middle pieces, but there are some speckles. So let's go ahead and despeckle this. Good, that worked like a dream. Now this 23 points, 29, excuse me. <coughs> okay, this 23% one should all just be one color. And then there shouldn't be only, there should only be one other red and that's the, the straps inside. But because we had to pick one color and kind of solidify it, the rest of it, you know, is, they just need to be matched up. So let's go ahead and merge them. And let's go ahead and merge it with the same red. That way we can just go ahead and um, take out the back. We'll just make it white. Okay. This is our dark gray. There are some speckles. I don't know if you can see that or that. We could take our time and go in and left click on the mouse and pull down or pull in any direction that you want to try to erase in. This is a little eraser tool, but that takes forever. So let's just choose the speckle. There are some speckles still. And the reason you wanna get all of these little speckles is because this is where, if you don't have a color there, the machine's gonna skip it and you're gonna have little speckles in your design. You're gonna be like, why is that like that? Or it's gonna speckle colors and do a bunch of jump stitches, which is frustrating in its own. Okay, the blues look good. And how does our black thread look? Perfect. That looks really good. So now uh, to get even more professional, what you might have even done in paint is cut out this whole circle because if you look closely at the circle and also these lines right up here, they're much smaller. So their satin stitch doesn't need to be as big as the satin stitches up here. For the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to put it all as one size because I just realized that we probably should change that. <laughs> but that's just an extra step. Um, once you get the hang of sewer and understanding it, you'll be able to do all of this. So just take this one, you know, just go up here and grab that. I'll do it with the freeform selection and then take this whole one and put it over there and digitize that separately as like a medallion. And that way all of your satin stitches will actually be to scale. They will be the size that fits this and then these will be the size that fits that. So wish I would have done that. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 colors. No, that's not 10. <laughs> that's eight colors, okay. All right, so let's go over here to our fill region bucket. We'll grab the white and let's get rid of that backing. That was so bright. Let's refill the red. This is just gonna fill in tiny little spots, tiny little pixels that maybe don't have any color at all. Okay, so now let's go with our lightest gray for that middle. Second lightest for this one. And I like to fill it in with the sew art colors because I feel like that mm, saturates everything a little bit better with their own program. You know, it kind of fills in all the little gaps along the edges and stuff. Okay, and then a darker gray for this part. I think we're gonna end up with nine colors because this right here has to get turned back to blue. So we have all of our dark grays. Let's go ahead and do our black. They're all connected. It didn't look like we had any misconnects, any disconnections, any lines broken. So they should all be on the same. If you want to go in and take the um, pencil tool, you can go in and define those lines a little bit more. Just take your time. Okay, so let's grab the blue. 
and then a light blue. Okay, so there is our basic design. Pop out of there. We should have nine colors. What? Why is it 11 colors? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Something's not right here. Oh, look at this little. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors. Okay, that is where we want to be. Now from here, we'll go over into the stitch image button. And this is one where we're not going to use auto sew image because we want to be able to add a satin stitch to the edge. And we also wanna be able to decide which order these are gonna go in, which order everything is gonna stitch in, okay? And auto sew, you can't choose that. A lot of people use auto sew. I rarely use it. Realistically, the only time I ever use it is in tutorials to show other people not to use it or when you can use it, like with silhouettes and easy stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to just stick with the default. We have our fill. I'm not going to change any of this. We're going to start here with this one right in the middle to kind of anchor down the design. On a design this dense, you're going to want a lot of stabilizer. So whatever stabilizer you usually use, double it up or go get some thick stuff. So um, just a little tip. Then we're going to go over here to this gray. And then it's going to jump back to this gray. I have a single needle machine, so I, I have to digitize in the style of um, not wanting to change my thread back and forth. <laughs> so that's why I'm digitizing it like this. If you have it with a um, multi-needle, then you probably can digitize it more next, 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 next. But if you're digitizing like me, or if you um, embroider like I do, then you'll have to digitize like this. Okay, so we got all the grays. Now let's just go ahead and grab the red since we're down here. Then it's gonna jump up here to this red. And then we're gonna go over here to the blue. I believe on a multi-needle machine, you'd be able to just click this one next and it'll just go from the blue to that blue magically and wonderfully. Not so many jump stitches, but maybe, I don't know. I have no experience with one, unfortunately. Okay, and then I'm not going to digitize this middle part because I think you guys can see how that's gonna go and that's gonna take forever. So now that we've got all of the basic regular embroidery ready. We're going to go up to the top. I don't know why I tried to do that. That didn't make any difference. Choose outline border, or no, sorry, outline center line, and then make sure you switch over here to satin, because if not, you're going to get a really funny just straight line on the running stitch. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's make it 40 and 2, and it's going to make it where these aren't going to connect and there's going to be some disparities down in here because of the size, but that's okay. I'm just showing you guys what, what we're doing here. Okay. 
So let's click right up here in the top where it's flat. For satin stitch, you want to start on where it's flat so that it can do its thing and then come back to you and meet up on a flat spot. When it tries to meet up over here, you get a big old gap. If it tries to meet up on a corner, bigger gap. So try to meet on somewhere flat. Think about where your tail is going to come back. Okay, so the satin stitch is done doing its route. And as you can see, there are some pieces that didn't get in there. And it's gonna just, it's gonna look really ugly on this part. So I really wish that I had taken the medallion out first. But because we're not stitching this out and this is all just conceptual, I think that I don't need to really worry too much about this. Okay, so now this guy is done. We are going to, why do I keep trying to scroll up? It doesn't make any difference what we're doing here. Okay, save as. I always choose save as instead of save because save just saves it to, I think, my documents. And I never think to look in my documents. I try to save it on my desktop so it's really easy to find since I delete most of this stuff after I'm done with it. Okay. So this is wants us to save our image file. We don't need to do that. So we're going to choose cancel. And then see, it takes you to documents. We'll go to desktop. And we'll go original. Um, one. <laughs> I've done this a few times, so I've had to get a little creative with the last one. But that wasn't very creative at all. <laughs> oh, I meant to show you where you can say resize it. Hold on. I'll show you again in a second when this is done doing its thing. Okay, that took like 45 minutes to save. I'm not even kidding you. It took forever. So if it feels like it skipped, it's because it did. <laughs> it took a long time to save. I'm not sure if it's my computer, stuff that's going on in the background. I don't know. But um, we'll click OK. Okay, and I'm going to try to show you really quick before we go into Sew It Pro. When you go to Save As, choose Cancel for the image. And then right here, it's going to give you a design scale factor. It has a one for the total. So it's like one is equal to like 100%. So let's go down for my machine. I have to make it 0.5. That's still too big. So 0.4, 0.3, 0.5. That's perfect. Okay, so that's just how you change it at the end. And then choose save, but I'm not going to do that because that took forever. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you guys in Sew It Pro in just a moment, okay? Okay, guys, I've been trying to get this to go all night, all day. I've been working on this since 10 o'clock this morning. I don't know what else to do to make this program run faster on my computer or just to make it run faster, period. I don't know if it's going to do the same thing on a new computer, if it does the same thing for you guys. I don't know. But I'm tired. I'm getting cranky and I'm getting 
turning into a big old baby. So my pumpkin is getting ready to... Uh, I can't even scroll down. That is so frustrating. So I'm not even going to try to keep doing this. Hopefully you guys have learned enough from what I've showed you so far. Whenever you've finished digitizing those other two designs separately, bring them into Sew Up Pro. Choose Edit. Don't choose Edit. Choose File. Choose Merge. And that will bring up your option to add another PES file to this. So. The only other one I have out here right now is this, it's the same thing, so I'm not going to do that. I just want to zoom out so I can work on it. And every time I do that, it gets locked up. With your fonts, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to want to do that over that. Don't worry about these jump stitches. Um, in the view, you can go up here to view and turn them off. I like to see where my jump stitches are going to be. So, I'm really sorry guys. I'm sorry that this is so long and you're not getting a stitch out or really a full tutorial, but I might not ever use this program again if I have to continue trying to zoom and wait and zoom and wait just to zoom in and out. That's just, it's just ridiculous. So I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.